Alright, as I promised from the last video, we're going to go ahead and start configuring our Ubuntu server. But if you did not watch part 2 of this series of videos, go back and actually watch part 2 because if you don't have all those prerequisites, what I'm about to do right now, it's not going to work as it should. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And like I said in the previous video, we were really eager to click the start button last time. So this time we're actually going to go ahead and click it and get this whole entire thing going. So it's going to say up here that your keyboard is going to be automatically detected, which is fine. And we're going to go ahead and click install Ubuntu server by clicking the enter key on your keyboard. And then we're going to go ahead and select our language. English is fine. United States is fine. Then it's going to ask you if you want to detect your keyboard layout. Just say no. And it's going to origin of keyboard, English, US. Then it's going to go ahead and do a little bit more configurations. So you see this little pop up up here. We can just go ahead and click on the X on that one. So this is going to take a little bit of time to do a configuration, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and I'll come back when this is done. All right, it went ahead and finished um, doing those configurations, and it actually detected some of our, some of our virtual um, hardware. So like, like I showed you guys before, we actually set up two network interfaces. So we're going to go ahead and just select the first one by clicking Enter, and it's going to go ahead and run more configurations. So I'll go ahead and see you guys in a sec. All right, it went ahead and actually finished. So it wants us to create a host name. You can pretty much just name it whatever you want. And for me, I'm just going to go ahead and call Ubuntu Box. We're going to call Ubuntu Server. We're going to go ahead and click Continue. And then we want to give it a, a name of, the, of a user for our server. So we're just going to go ahead and create one, just call it Rick. Username for the account, Rick, that's fine. And then the password, it doesn't have to be something super strong. We're just going to go ahead and call it test. Like I said, this is not a production server. You would not want to do this in actual production. But for us, we're not really worried about that. We're not going to go ahead and we're not going to encrypt our home directory because that will slow down the speed of reading and writing to disk. Well, to virtual disk in our case. And it's going to ask us if time zone is correct. Yes. So this is going to go ahead and do more configurations and I'll come back when this is done. All right, so we're getting here to, if you want to use um, an LVM, so we're going to go ahead and just say use entire disk. And yep, that disk looks fine. Right changes, yes. So this is going to go ahead and actually start installing uh, the Ubuntu server on our virtual machine. So I'll be back. All right, it looks like the base configuration went ahead and finished. And I was asking us for a proxy server. We're going to go ahead and click continue for none. All right, now it's going to go ahead and ask you if you want to uh, Linux to install the security updates for you or if you want to manage them or whatever. But for us, this is not an actual production server. So we're going to go ahead and say no automatic updates. Okay, now here's the real, real cool thing about... Um, Ubuntu and why you should think about using Ubuntu in the first place instead of other distributions of Linux because Ubuntu really made this whole entire process really easy. Check it out. If you want to open SSH, all you do is you select the one you want and you click space bar. So we want an open SSH server. We want a LAMP server. So that's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And we also want a Zomba file server so we can actually send files back and forth for our HTML, JavaScript, or PHP. And then we're going to go ahead and set, also select Virtual Machine Host. Now we're ready to click Continue. And this is going to go ahead and install this, so I'll be back. You, you'll be prompted for a MySQL um, password. So we just go ahead and click Select Your Password. And that's it. And it will go ahead and keep installing. One thing that I wanted to mention while this is installing is security. So right now, this uh, we just decided to install OpenSSH. So pretty much this machine is available for anyone on my network to SSH into the machine. <coughs> so this is really important to think about. If you're going to be using a laptop to do your development and you go off to a coffee shop or you're out in school or you're out at your uh, facility or wherever you might be, 
people will be able to see your machine and try to SSH into it with the password. So th there are some vulnerabilities to this uh, way of actually developing an application. So have that in consideration when you're actually out there in the real world doing things. So if you're in a coffee shop, more than likely don't run the virtual machine. And if you do want to run it, make sure you do have the right security precautions that I'm not covering here. Because this is pretty much a development machine. This is not for production. This is not for being out there with you know hundreds and hundreds of other machines. No, this is pretty much for you as a developer to create code and test that code. So we're going to go ahead and wait, wait this out till this finishes. All right, it looks like Ubuntu wants to answer another question. Do you want to install Grub Loader as a master boot record? Yes. All right, it looks like the installer went ahead and finished the installation. So we're going to go ahead and click on continue. And this is going to go ahead and reboot the system. So right now, 